Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Rockwell's RS Logix Emulator 5000. Um, well, Rockwell Emulator 5000 is actually a software simulator for Alan Bradley line of Logix 5000 controllers, such as Control Logix, you know, Compact Logix, Flex Logix, um, Soft Logix, uh, 5800, and Drive Logix. The whole idea behind that is to actually mimic a function of a PLC without actually having a physical hardware or physical PLC sitting next to you uh, so they can do perform do or perform uh, debugging of your logic right so um, one thing you have to keep in mind with uh, the emulator is that the the revision of the emulator has to match the firmware a revision that's assigned to the logics so it's similar to what you have with the PLC right so if your PLC is revision 31 your logics program has to be targeted to PLC revision 41 same kind of thing so um, let's go ahead and launch the RS logics emulator 5000 on my computer here you know to launch you just click to the Windows icon on the bottom left hand corner here and then type emulate it'll bring up your oops emulate emulate and bring up RS Logix Emulate 5000. You click that. After a few moments, uh, the uh, emulator appears. So to determine what version of uh, emulator you have, you click on Help and click on About. I have revision 24. If you have multiple revisions, it's going to be reflected here. So I'm going to close this guy here. One easy way to get a different version of emulator is by going to Alan Bradley website. So you open your Chrome here. And if you navigate to ab.com, go support, compatibilities and downloads, find files, and this section here, if you type emulate, the one that you're looking for would be this one here, uh, what we have. So they got multiple versions of emulators. So for me, I've got version 24. If you need version 18 or whatnot, this is for RS Logix 5000. But if you have a studio, you would go here and select whichever version that you have. Okay, that aside, let's say for all my intents and purposes, my emulator is version 24. So uh, one thing to note also is that if you look at the system tray, you'll notice that uh, there's no RS logics or RS links uh, uh, started yet. But as soon as you put a new emulator in here, the RS links will come in right off the get go by itself by default the next time you open the emulator. But just for demonstration, I'm going to launch my RS links here. Classic. So you can see that I've got four different uh, connections going on here. Um, we'll have to introduce a new uh, virtual uh, back panel as soon as we have a PLC in here to see the PLC. So uh, in order to add the PLC, you would click this guy here, right click, create, emulator RS Logix 5000, and hit OK. And just going to say next, and just going to assume default. But note here, there's multiple version of simulators that you can have, right? So Hit next and next. So now you have an emulator in place. Um, one more thing I would like to mention is that uh, slot 0 and 1, you cannot remove them. Unfortunately, I, I, I've not found a way to remove it uh, because these are the communication media between your emulator and the RS links so that they can talk to your program. Right? You can't really remove them, right click and put in program mode and remove it. You can't do anything of that capacity. I've tried. But if you know a way to remove it or move to a slot 15 and 16, do leave a comment and hopefully everybody will learn something from everybody else here. So, okay, so let's go back to RS Links Classic here uh, and set up a connection to this emulator. So in order to do that, we'll be to click on this S looking connection called Configuration Driver. Click this guy here. So as you know, I've got one, two, three, three items in here. RS Links Gateway, those are just soft connections. So uh, from here, what you're going to do is you're going to click Virtual Back Plane. Click this guy here, Add New, and you have to give a name. So I'm going to give it a name called CyberNet. There you go. Make it simple, CyberNet. 
hit OK, hit, click OK on zero. And now you can see this to be running. So if you close this guy, you have this here. It automatically picks up your emulator on slot two. Right? So if you were to add one more emulator in here, next. Again, just gonna stick to revision four. Next, next. And if you don't see your emulator here, after adding a few more emulators, I'm just gonna add a few more emulators just for demonstration. 24, just you can accept everything in default. Say I've got a four emulator. Maybe five, eh? Let's try it. Five. Just for demonstration, I'm gonna show five. Oh, okay, you have added all you've you got five CPUs in here starting from slot two to six, but you can see sometimes they don't actually update. If this doesn't update by itself, what you do, because you can see slot six emulator is not there yet. The way to update this would be right-click this guy here. And hit remove. Now you say remove, say yes, and if this should come in by itself. If this doesn't come in here, just click on Window Workstation, and this this uh, branch will come out by itself again. Let me try if I can mimic that here. Remove, yes, yeah. So you know how this thing selects by itself. So if it doesn't, uh, please click on the workstation. This branch will come up by itself. Now you should see six. One, oh, sorry, so see all five of them. One, two, three, four, four, five, all the way from top slot two to six. So now you have a bunch of emulators, right? Uh, just and to remove them, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove uh, hit program, remove program, remove. I'm gonna remove all except slot number two. Remove. Program remove. And again, if you don't see this thing being refreshed, right click this guy here, remove, yes, and then click on workstation, expand it, you'll see only once PLC on, on board there. Okay, now how do you upload the program in here? So let's launch our uh, RS, sorry, Studio 5000, create a new project. So the key takeaway from here is that you're gonna to have to create the same firmware version. So from this new project, you're gonna select emulator. I know you might have compact logics or control logics, but since you're gonna to upload to a to an emulator, you're gonna to have to select an emulator 5000. Give it a name called something on a desktop. Hit next. On a revision that you're trying to assign it to, make sure that you assign it to version 24 because my emulator is version 24. Is this, like I mentioned to you earlier in this video, if your uh, PLC firmware is version 29 or whatever it could be, this has to match. This program has to match the same revision. So my target revision is 24. Uh, you can choose any slot you want, right? Uh, so I'm going to keep it simple and choose slot four. And they're asking where is your CPU? You can see my CPU is in slot two. So I'm going to leave it at slot two. No password protection. And hit finish. Okay, now your program is loaded in here. You have an emulate emulator here as part of your test. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna write a simple program to make sure. Main routine. I'm gonna just gonna add a let's say time on. There you go, I got the program here. So I'm gonna hit Education, Who's Active. It opens the Who's Active. You open your virtual chassis again. And this is the target PLC or the emulator that you're trying to up download it to. So if you download it, then they'll tell you this is the target, download it. Okay, the download is complete. I'm gonna park this on the side here and put this thing on the side here. So that we can see multiple windows. So uh, you can see it is in OK. It's not in run or anything mode. So if I go here and I go run mode, you notice how this run will get highlighted. Run mode. Yes. You can see the PLC is actually running and the counter is counting up. I'm going to zoom in a bit so they can see clearly. You can see the timer is counting and it's just going up and down, up and down. 
Last but not least is how you actually uh, switch off the connection to your emulator. Okay, you can't just switch off from here and close it and hopefully next time around it will work. I've done that a few times and nine out of 10 times, this emulator would, will crash. You'll see a big X here, right here. So the right way to do this would be, first of all, uh, you gotta go offline here and then you have to put this in program mode and then remove it. And then after this has been removed, then you close your emulator. That's how you should be shutting down every time you're, when you're done using uh, like that. Once you're done using the program, that's how you should be shutting it off, right? If you close it, just close the emulator. And like I say, nine out of 10 time, your emulator will crash. I hope this short tutorial will help you out in your project. Other than that, you have an awesome day. Take care, bye.